Hey! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. On Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! The covered wagons had been on the trail for many weary weeks, threading across trackless country from the east toward territories that had just been opened in the west. Asa Quimby led the way, riding in the first wagon. His wife sat on the seat beside him. Quimby's face was set in hard lines of determination. Get up here! Get up! His manner was defiant, as if he dared his wife to challenge the plans that he had just announced. Well, speak up, Kate. You got something to say? Say it. Well, Asa, if you want my opinion, I don't think you're being fair to the others. Oh, you don't, eh? None of them know your plans, do they? No, Chet. Oh, I thought not. You think they'd come along with me if they'd have known what I had in mind? I know they wouldn't have come. And I'd been a fool to tell them. There'll be a big complaint when the truth is known. Anyone that don't like what I do can leave his wagon and supplies and go it alone. On foot. Here comes Clayton Morton's boy. Well, I got eyes. Hey, Miss Quimby! Oh, hold on. Easy, boy. Mr. Quimby? Well, what do you want? My pa thinks we're off the trail. You tell your pa, I know where I'm going. Oh, pa dear. says we should be south of the Mesa instead of north. Tell him that I've been here before. I know where we're going. Now go on. Tell him. Yes, sir. Get up there. Get up. Show me I'm off the track. But everyone I know we're going wrong. Last time where we stopped, we were told to be sure and go south of the Mesa. We were told there were bad Indians north of it. And now everyone can see the Mesa on the our left side. They know we're in Indian country. Well, they know too blame much. Oh, here comes Jake Porter right now. I expect he wants to tell me the same thing. Hey, Bring it up. Oh, boy, hold oh, oh. Well, what do you want, Jake? Bring it up, I tell you. I gotta talk to you. Oh, there, boy. Stop the way. Wait a minute, boy. Oh, boy, oh, Well, what do you want, Jake? Speak up fast. we got to shove on. Here come some of the others. Better tell them the truth, Asa. They'll have to know it sooner or later. <laughs> well, see here, Quimby. We're not going right. No? Hey there, Quimby. We should be on the other side of that maze. Yeah. yeah. What about it? My yeah, sake. Yeah, it looks Quimby. like every man in the train is coming up here to tell you. Hey, Quimby. We're north of the Mesa. It should be on the south. Now, hold on. There's bad Indians in this valley. That's right. It should be south of here. Now, listen to me. All of you quiet down. I know where we are. I know it as well as any one of you. Remember, I've been out here before. 
I know this valley. Then why'd you bring us here with this redskin danger? That danger is overrated. That mesa is a landmark. I brought you to this valley because this is where I intend to set up camp. Why? But why? How long came to stay here? Well, I don't know for how long. Depends on a lot of things. There's water just ahead, and that's where we stop. Well, Maybe the rest of us should have something to say about this. Anyone that don't want to stay is free to go on. I got a wife to consider. Yeah, just too. remember this. Anyone that wants to go on can do so. But he'll go without horses, without a wagon, and without food. Now, Chief, yeah. you yeah. heard what I said. Every last one of you borrowed money from me so as you could come on this trip. I own every wagon and horse in the outfit. Well, yeah, Quimby, that's not true. It's true that each of us owes you money for his help. Well, you read the contract we drawed up. You'll see that I can call the loan whenever I want. You don't have the cash? I can take the outfit. Very of all the cursed dogs. Now huh? listen to me for a minute. There's gold in this here valley, and I aim to get it. Oh, so that's it. You got us all interested in this trip by promising we could settle down on homestead land. Oh. And so you can. After you've paid off your debt to me... By digging for gold. Right. You had this trick in mind from the start. Well, what if I did? You promised me I to won't stop you from homesteading when your debts are paid off. Uh, well, boys, looks like we got took in a plenty. Hey, Jerry, can you really take away our equipment? Yeah, I guess you can. Then we can go on with nothing and starve. Or we can stay here and probably get killed by Redskins. If I'm not scared of the Indians, there's no call for you to be. I tell you, they ain't dangerous at all. That's just the story that's been cooked up to scare people away from this valley. There's gold here, and I want it. Now talk it over and make your choice. Is it? Well, Jake, if we go to stay here, you might at least pass out the guns and rifles you got in your wagon. So you can all turn on me? Not on your life. But if the Redskins attack, we got no way to fight them. If they attack, there'll be a way to fight them. Now make up your minds what you aim to do. Asa Quimby held all the cards and played them well. He won his point, and a camp was set up in the valley. It was seen by an Indian on the very next day, but the Indian was Tonto, the faithful friend of the Lone Ranger. He reported his discovery to the masked man. But there isn't enough gold in the valley to warrant that risk, Tonto. You may know that. I wonder if those people were warned about Bakuna and the rest of the savage Indians. Uh, them warned. They camped there in spite of the warning. I wonder how we can persuade them to move on. That's not easy. Yes, I know it isn't. When men are bitten by the gold bug, they're hard to reason with. You hear that? Yes. That Indian. One of the bakunas. Uh. Over here, Tonto brings scout. Come on, Silver. Well, this way, scout. I'll hide behind the rocks. Hey, Tonto, easy now. Be safe here. There they are, Tonto. Half a dozen of them. Uh, those bad Indians. Without seeing us. That's good. Look how they're heading. Head to south. They're not riding hard. Not on the war path. Those Easterners must be warned. We go? Yes. If we circle to the north, we can ride hard and reach the camp before those Indians. Come on, fellow. Steady, big fellow. Get up. Come on. Come on. Asa Quimby directed the work of the men in the valley. He had the men working in groups of two or three, taking ore from various places in the hillside. Jake Porter wore an angry frown as he shoveled out the dirt and rock that Tom's pick loosened. Yeah, might as well try to reason with a mule. Didn't get nowhere talking to Asa, Jake. Nowhere at all. Yeah. Sure is hot work. Yeah. How long do you think we'll be here? Well, if Quimby expects to stay here till we find real pay date for him, it might be months. Months? Yep. I don't see how we can get away with it. Especially when he figures to keep whatever gold we find. He's getting away with it. But Jake, is it legal? Legal? <laughs> what difference does that make? Quimby has all the weapons in his wagon and he guards them like a hawk. I uh, suppose we wouldn't have a chance of getting away with the horses and wagons, would we? No use trying that to him. Even if we did get away, Quimby would catch up with us. 
sooner or later it'd have the law on us and take everything we had. Well, you're in a rape, poor cat. The only thing we can do is stay here and hope we find enough gold to satisfy him. Hey, Jake. Well? Yeah. I thought I heard hoofs. Well, which way? Yeah, seemed to come over yonder. Yeah. There they are, you see me? They're coming this way. They're right this way. They're coming for us. Hey, Where's the gun? Come on, Jake. We gotta make haste to hand over rifles and guns. Hey, look, coming down the hill. A masked man. There's another engine. We're caught. Let's ride them. Hey, do Break out the rifles you've got. We gotta defend ourselves. Hurry it up, Timby. We gotta have weapons. Engines from both sides. And that masked man. Boom, two there. Get up, Queen Bear. Hey! Wait a minute. Those ones at the far end of the valley have rained up. Why don't you pass out the weapon? Hey, come on, you're on a pass. But that mess, man, and the rich kid. They ain't cutting over towards us. They're heading for the six that's over yonder. They've opened fire. The Lone Ranger and Ponto dashed past the camp with guns blazing and charged straight toward the Indian scouts. The Indians, surprised at finding settlers in the valley, were further surprised by the sudden attack and the burst of gunfire. They quickly turned and fled. Rain up, Ponto. Hold on, boy. Ready. They've gone. Now we'll go and talk to those settlers. Come on. Huh? They chase the redskins so they can rob us. Get out the guns, Hayser. You've got to give us weapons. Certainly. You don't need them. I'm covering that mask, man. Oh, you stubborn fool. I know what I'm doing. Saw those redskins turn tail, didn't you? <laughs> Got no nerve at all. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks for chasing the critters, mister. Even if you are a masked outlaw, I'm grateful. Steady, Silver. And uh, you show it by holding a gun on me? I'm taking no chances. You needn't think you're going to rob us. Now clear on. You must be Aza Quimby. Well, what of it? Haven't you been warned about the Indians in this valley region? <laughs> I know all about them. They're not near as savage as people say. No, not if they're left alone. But they resent people who camp on their hunting grounds. Yeah, like a pack of lies to keep people away from the gold that's here. There's not enough gold to make the risk worthwhile. Oh, no? I think he's right, Quimby. We'll find out for ourselves. The Indians will return. If they do? I'll fire a few shots at them like you did. They don't have any stomach for a fight. The Indians you saw were merely scouts. After they've reported to their leader... You'll see another kind of attack. One that won't be turned back so easily. All right. Thanks for the advice. Now shove on. Are you the only armed man in this valley? Yes, he is. Thank you, shut up. I won't shut up. That masked man seems to know what he's talking about. Listen, mister. We've got plenty of weapons that'll be brought into play if they're needed. Oh, I see. Do the rest of you men want to leave here? Yes, yeah, they do. They're working for me, and they've got to do as I say. He won't let none of us go till we find gold for him. You mind your own business, you young pipsqueak. And it's for you, mister. You shove on right away. Very well, Quimby. And you men get back to work. Just one thing, Quimby. Well? If Bakuna and his Indians attack, you'll be responsible for anything that happens to these men and women. I know my responsibility. Oh? I don't have to be told by a masked man. And if Bakuna knows that you're the only one who wants to stay, he might deal with you personally. <laughs> Come on, fellow. Get up. Get up. Come on, fellow. Come on, fellow. Otto, we've seen enough to confirm the story you brought me. Ah. The others are at Quimby's mercy. You won't even let them have guns. If Bakuna makes an attack, they'll be wiped out before they can get weapons to defend themselves. Otto, we need help. I have a plan. Hurry to camp where we can talk. Montilver, get off! Come! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. After leaving the valley where Asa Quimby underestimated the peril of the savage Indians with Chief Bakuna, the Lone Ranger and Tonto hurried to their camp. Oh, sir, how about you? Oh, very big fella. Oh. You got plans? Yes, yeah, Tonto. Now, those scouts will report to Bakuna. He'll declare war on the people in the valley. And then he'll spend at least a day and a night getting ready for the war. Is that right? That may give us the t- time we'll need. So get your friend Chief Thundercloud to help us. Him not far from here. That's why I thought of him. And Thundercloud will not have to make war. Now listen to me. As the day advanced, the men in the valley discussed the appearance and the warning of the masked man. The more they talked about this situation, the more they resented the Asa Quimby's attitude. Toward sunset, the leader and his wife were seated on the ground in the shade of the wagon. Oh, Asa, I could only make you realize how wrong you are. Hey, the only thing you can do is help me guard the rifles so the men don't get them. If they do, there'll be gunplay and a few people will get hurt. Remember that. Oh, I hate my part in this. Hate myself for helping you. I... What's this coming? Huh. Looks like another committee to talk to me. Jake Porter in the lead. Have to have a showdown with him. Well, what do you want? Why'd you quit work? Rimby, we want to speak to you. You've spoken before, and I know what you aim to say. There'll be no more argument about this job. We don't aim to argue, is it? We're just going to tell you what we decided, that's all. Yeah, and you can do as you please about it. Tell him, Jake. Rimby... You own the wagons and the horses, uh, guns and rifles, and all the supplies. You bet I do. Now continue to own them till you critters pay me what they cost. We might try to kick this stuff and run out on you. Try it. Maybe I won't be able to shoot all of you, but I'll get a few. Always. Oh, don't talk. Well, so. nobody. We don't plan to do anything like that. We'll stay here. We'll stay till you're good and ready to leave the valley and go on to the land we can homestead. Like you talked about back east. <laughs> you bet you'll stay. You'll stay or go on alone and starve. We'll stay, but we won't work. What's that? You heard him. We won't do another lick of dig and go. Why? Oh, you owe me money, and I'm giving you a chance to pay it by digging gold. We, the old looks, will be a mighty long time. We'll find the mother load, the pay dirt. Not with any digging that we do. All right. All right, then. You just sit on your haunches and do nothing. You bet we will. And when you're hungry for food, you can go to work and earn it. Huh? Remember, I've got all the food. Maybe you can hunt game, but you'll have to do it with sticks and stones or make some Indian arrows. You mean you'd starve us? I mean I'm boss, and I'll have my way. Hey, what's that? Asa, look! Here, here! Let me get one. Let me get my gun. Do not move. There, end of the wagon. Why, you Stand move. still. Come on, soldiers, on. Huh. Hey, guys, we're covered. You drop guns. But I can't. Drop them quick. Yeah. Hey, that's the redskin that was here with the masked man. Other Indian help, Donald. You not yeah. make trouble. Here's what comes of keeping guns away from us. To go to. Be so long. Indian not hurt you, fella. Only want them leaders. Uh, next up, look up. Asa, look up your head. Asa, we've got them. Let me go. Let me go, I tell you. Tell me. Tell me why. What crazy thing we do? You stand still. Not move, not get hurt. Let my husband go. You let me. Do something for him. Don't let him take me. Don't let him capture me. If any of us make a move, we'll be shot. We can't do nothing, Quimby. Don't let me go. Be quiet. You not get hurt. Yeah, me got filler. That good. Helpless in the firm grasp of Chief Thundercloud. Asa Quimby was carried away from the valley to an Indian village where he was bound with lashings of rawhide and put into a wigwam. There he lay on the hard ground as the night approached. He couldn't see outside his prison, but he heard the sounds of Indians going about their activities. He was tortured by visions of what lay ahead. They'll kill me. They'll kill me by torture. That's what they'll do. 
One hour of darkness dragged by, and then part of another. Torture me to death. Then the flap of the wigwam moved, and a tall form slipped to Quimby's side. Keep your voice down, Quimby. Who, who are you? I'm wearing a mask. Remember? Oh, you're in with the Indians. Your pal helped capture me. What's that happened to me? I'm not sure. But keep your voice down, Lois. Get me out of here. Save me. I'll pay. You made the Indians angry. But I didn't mean no harm. You occupied their land. They've got no claim to it. Their hunting ground. I, that's no call for them to kill me. You can't let them kill me. You were free. Would you clear out of this valley? Just let me loose. I'll do anything. I'll do anything you say. I wonder if you'd keep your word. Sure I will. Honest, You're I You're pretty sharp, Quimby. I'll do anything you say. Keep me out of here now. I wonder how your companions would feel if I would let you go back to them. Oh, they'd want me to die. You took the Mesa. It makes it hard to help you. What? What do you mean? Just cut me loose. You're huh? surrounded by Indians. You couldn't get out of the village. No, that wouldn't help you. There's just one way you can be rescued. I'll have to bring your companions to save you. Oh, they won't do it. Can you blame them? They came west to settle homes. They came here because of promises you made. I'll keep the promises. I meant to all along. But I wanted that gold. Wendy, I... I brought a paper with me. Paper? Yes. Before I came, I talked to your friends. They won't trust you. To talk to them? I drew up an agreement for you to sign. You will promise to leave the valley at once. Uh. You'll promise to give every man who borrowed money from you one year to pay back what he owes without interest. But that... No, wait. That's not why I started this expedition. You started it in the hope of making the men your slaves until they found a gold mine for you. But now things will be different. All oh, my plan. There's the agreement, Quimby. I'll let a match so you can see it. If you sign it, I think your friends might be willing to try to help you. I... I'll sign Mr. Quimby was hollow-eyed from lack of sleep. The night had been spent in terror, fearing that the Indians might begin their punishment at any moment. Asa counted the minutes to morning. Then at daybreak, he began listening for his companions to come. Presently, he heard someone approaching. His hopes rose, but they were instantly dashed when he saw Chief Thundercloud enter the wigwam. You! Ah, uh, it's me. Indian plenty angry at Paleface. No, now listen. You drive game from Valley. You spoil Indian hunting grounds. You just let me go. I swear to leave here. I won't make no trouble for you. You speak with crooked tongue. No, no, I mean it. Make promise, not keep promise. Not good. What? What are you going to do to me? You die. No, no, please. I don't want to die. Indian not want to starve. No. You drive game away. Indian starve. You die. You not drive game away. Indian not starve. Who let me? What's that? Brave, come. Take you to stake. No, no, please. Don't burn me. I promise. My next day. Let me go. Please. Please let me go. I'll leave here. I'll take you with me, huh? My friend. Halu. Halu. Oh, my goo. They're just coming. They're just kept here. Why do we keep moving there? Why don't you get out of here? Help! They're here! Help! Me kill now! Me kill! Hold it! Hold it. You, you are not. All of you, get away from that man. Cut these cards. Get me out of here. Help me! You'll be out in a few seconds. Turn this way so I can cut the rawhide. There. There you are. Hey, Quimby. Hey. Oh, Jake, you came. You are ready. Yeah. Now you can stand. Boy, you killed Red Redskin's back. What about these? I'll take care of these Indians, Jake. Yep, uh, Ricky Wills. On your way, Quimby. And remember your promise. Oh, Jake. You saved my life. You came and saved me. In spite of all I've done. Leave that for later. The men sure broke camp in record time. They seem right gay about it, too. Of course they do. They are right gay. And so are you. <laughs> hey, I'm so glad to be alive. I don't mind leaving this valley in the gold that might be here. Might be? Here's it. 
Everyone sit and shut up. <laughs> Good, Jay. Fine and dandy. They've still got the rifles they took from your wagon to rescue, eh? You want them collected? What? You mean to say I'm still boss? Yep. I'm going to give you another chance. Where's the dog gone? <laughs> you hear that, Kate? Kate, tell the boys to keep the weapons. Tell them to keep everything. I don't want nothing but the chance to live. And... Uh, <laughs> The repayment of the loans in a year or so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, easy. <clears throat> and say, that reminds me. I've been wondering. About what? You could as they came to rescue me. You fired a lot of shots at those engines. How is it that no one got hurt? <laughs> you really want to know? Yes, I do. If you critters can't shoot better than that, there's no point in having rifles. Well, easy. Those engines that captured you were... Friendly engines. Friendly? <laughs> they didn't handle me like they were friendly. <laughs> Carry me away, tie me up hand and foot. Well, uh, just think of what would have happened if the bad engines had got you. You see, that masked man fixed it up a few Sunday clouds to help teach you a lesson. Oh, doggone. <laughs> I never knew how good it was to be alive, even without gold. Till I was sitting in that wigwam waiting for torture. The coolest tribe is war dancing right now, is he? Getting ready to attack this valley in a few hours. Let him come, Chad Ratham. We won't be here. Move over, Kate. Let me on to that. <coughs> Get your wagons, boys. We're starting off for Homestead Land. <coughs> hey, Jay. Yep. Look up on that hill. There's that masked man watching us. Yep. Who in tarnation is he, Jake? Well, I'll tell you, he's here. He's called the Lone Ranger. Well, I sure hope he comes to visit us when we're settled in our new home. <laughs> Get up there! Get along! <laughs> Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.